Hey folks, Phil Gallagher here for the first backlog recording. If you're watching this video for some reason, I was unable to stream, and this is the sort of apology for that. The date of recording is February 11th, 2020. So what I'm going to be playing today is a sort of a stock Eldrazi list. I took the list that won the Legacy Challenge this weekend from, I believe the username is KarateDom1. I left their main deck exactly as is because I thought it looked pretty good. Uh, flex slots here are two Dismembers, two Ballista, and Endbringers. Um, everything else is pretty traditional. Uh, we are running three Io Vugans, one Caracas, one Urborg, one Ace, one Wastes. Sorry, two Wastes in our flex land slots. Um, the changes that I've made to this deck list are all in the sideboard. The original deck list had just three cards different. <coughs> so the original deck list played two Warping Whales, which I thought were very bad, and then I got in contact with the pilot on Twitter, and they agreed that they were the worst card in the 75. Um, Warping Whale is a split removal card and hate card, so I just changed it to having a harder removal card and a harder hate card. It makes me a little less flexible, but a little more powerful. Um, and I think Thorn and Chalice are very good right now, uh, with all the Breach running around. The other change I made is that there was a Basilisk Collar in the sideboard, which I have replaced with Shadow Spear, because I think the idea of giving my Endless One Trample is hilarious. Uh, you've all, all probably seen Eldrazi before, so I'm just going to hop into a league and do as much recording as I can tonight. So Legacy's in a great place. I'm very happy with it. Um, a lot of people are really down on the format, either because of Oko or Breach. And to that, I say, have you tried Leyline and Chalice decks? Because they feel real good. I won the die roll. Um, this hand doesn't really do anything. I have, like, literally no Eldrazi. I can make a walking ballista. We're going to mulligan that look for something a little more objectively powerful. Uh, this is similarly rough. I can throw away a Reality Smasher and keep a hand that can create two two twos. And if I spike a Soul Land, this hand is insane. How many Soul Lands do I have? Four, seven, eight, nine. I do have a lot of Soul Lands. The issue is that one land isn't particularly good with this deck. Um, let's see if my opponent has any results from recently. Dark Poet Bill. Uh, not in this format. Uh, this is the best hand so far by far. We're going to keep this, we will get rid of our Dismember and our Walking Ballista and just keep our Threats. I'm going to be in very bad shape if Thought Not Seer is not good against my opponent for one reason or another. Uh, it seems like we're playing against Red Black Reanimator. I expect like an Entomb in response. Yep. One Grizzle Dad coming right up. One castable reanimation spell, please. Oof. Three castable reanimation spells. I have a Caracas that I can peel, or an Endbringer that I can use to get in the way.
Well, I'm actually going to go ahead and take the animate dead here and force my opponent to use... Yes, I want X to be 2. And force my opponent to use reanimate. This will result them in result in them drawing fewer cards overall. Sure. You can thought seize me. And then again, get that grizzled ad. Caracas, not Caracas, okay. Now we're potentially in a staring contest. Because I have four, seven, eight, nine. So I can attack for more than Grizzlebrand can gain. <clears throat> Awkwardly, my opponent can reanimate my Reality Smasher, but that was not a line that they took. There's a line they will potentially take now. Things get scary if they produce another creature, which they did not. But they still have nine cards. So anything can happen, most of which are bad for me. Uh, Cabal Therapy targeting themselves is not good for me. <coughs> That means another creature can go directly into the bin, which they can reanimate. So they have discarded both Grizzle Brands, and now they reanimate a Grizzle Brand to kill themselves. I mean, style points, but let's see, what happens if you reanimate right? my Reality Smasher? You are at 8, so you go to 4, yeah, you still die. Um, but I definitely think my opponent could have had outs that turn if they didn't. Well, no, no use ruminating too much over it. Ley Lines... Great. Spyglass, okay. Tumble Magnet, great. Thorn, great. Jitte, bad. Dismember, bad. Matter Reshaper is frequently weak. Walking Ballista, also pretty weak. Um, <coughs> I will trim some number of these. I don't know how deep we'll go in trimming these. So all of these cards are 100% coming in, and then the Sorcerer's Spyglass is kind of whatever. If I do this, I end up with 21 threats. Really 17 threats, though, because the Spirit Guides only count as threats in case of dire emergency. I will trim an endless one here to round things out. We're heavy on hate here, and somewhat light. Um, this is a good hand. <coughs> uh, it's not a great hand, because it doesn't have ley line, but it's a good hand. 
I'm going to keep it because turn one thorn into turn two thought knots here is strong. My opponent kept seven, which makes me nervous. And that Chancellor is not going to do anything against Endless One. So I can just use an Endless One and get it countered to still play a Thorn on turn one. Alright, uh, we may die for not be not mulliganing to Leyline. That is what it is. Um, so I don't know if you know this, but Intomb is an instant, and so is Dark Ritual. <coughs> uh, so I have this Chancellor trigger to think about, as well as a number of other things. So I'm going to cast an Endless One that's going to get countered, and so the follow-up question is, do I just Chalice on one, or... Do I Thorn? I think I Thorn. I could also go a little deeper and go the route of Endless One, Chalice on Zero, and Thorn, since my next two follow-up plays are likely to be Thought Knots here. I don't hate this. Goodbye, Chancellor Trigger. I'm not going to pay for that. And we'll see if that's good enough. My opponent is stuck on lands. It would be a shame if something happened to them. It's tempting to Eldrazi Mimic and Wasteland my opponent. It means I can't Thought Knot immediately. I think I'd rather Thought Knot this turn and then Mimic and Wasteland next turn. Um, but there's definitely things that punish me for this. Alright. I guess I will just take a looting. Opponent's hand is very weak. So we can get rid of one of those now. <coughs> Once I take them off of this land, you know, Lotus, yeah, I was going to say. All right, and opponent is done with me. And we have one match one just like that. Um... I've been hyping up Leyline on Twitter as one of the cards that I think is absolutely the best in the format right now, and that's kind of... Matchups like that are the reason why so many of the combo decks of the format, like, right now, um, are either primarily or secondarily reliant on the graveyard. <clears throat> I suspect that Eldrazi might be better than Red Prison right now as a Chalice deck. Just because in the games where you don't draw your hate, you have just the possibility of, you know, mimicking the Thought Knot into Reality Smasher or equivalent as just a god draw that takes your opponent down. Yep.
We don't have a good turn one play, but we get Thought Knots here into Thought Knots here. And I'm perfectly happy with that. So we have backup Thought Knots here for whatever shenanigans my opponent has over there. Underground Sea Thought Seas makes me think combo. So it could be playing against something like Ant. Best draw might be something like an Eldrazi Mimic. That's probably quite bad. Um, my opponent could be just playing like a Grixis Delver deck though, in which case that card is live. My hand is now very awkward. So I have two cards that may or may not actually do anything. <coughs> and a couple of big uncastable boys. Um, Amp still very, very possible from my opponent. Land. Land. Uh... Is it Ant? Because if it's not Ant, playing this Chalice on Zero is absolute trash. But if I draw a land, I'm probably just playing a Smasher anyway. So Chalice. Oko pile. Oko pile. Land. Ugh. Uh, we're off to a rough start. Best dismember ever. It eats up two turns worth of Oko activations. So is my opponent actually a Delver deck? that just has Oko. So my, okay, that makes more sense now. I was gonna say, my opponent knows that I have this hand full of Reality Smashers. I don't know just cursed, cursed start here. Alright, we lost that one. Our opponent didn't win that one. Uh, so we are playing against some sort of bug deck featuring Oko. So can consider Spyglass, Ratchet Bomb, Thorns against this sort of deck. If they are Delver, Spatial Contortion is pretty good. The only thing that's indicative of them actually being a Delver deck is the one days that I saw. And this is going to make sideboarding kind of tricky. Because everything I can take out that's good against... So, for example, Ballista Dismember 
Jitte are all pretty darn weak against an Oko shell. But, like, Ballista and Jitte are great ways of dealing with a Dalber. And so life is awkward. I think I'm probably going to do something along this lines. Mattery Shaper isn't exactly the greatest in the face of opposing Elks. Like, it trades with an Elk and then gives you a card, but I'd rather just get bigger than the Elks. Chalice is kind of medium against Bug decks as well, but I think I'll take advantage of it when I'm on the play and play more threats or answers when I'm on the draw after I have a chance to adjust for what my opponent is playing better. <coughs> I would like to play first. It says lands and spells, but I don't do anything quickly. It's just turn 2, 2, 2, turn 3, 3, 3, turn 5, Smasher. Uh, we're going to try to take advantage of being on the play a little bit better than that. I will be keeping this hand. I think I just throw back my chalice, despite the fact that it's good in this opener. And I think I just go turn one, two, two, turn two, four, four, turn three, five, five. The only way that I can play Chalice on 1 is by playing City of Traders on 1. X is currently 2. Done. And I don't think I want to lose this land. So like the other way I could have opened up is City of Traders. <coughs> City of Traders Chalice into, oh, well, nice. All right, opponent does have Tarmogoyce and Delvers, uh, so we'll do some adjusting before the next match. So opponent will fetch, will be three things in the graveyard. Land, sorcery, creature. Um, but then we'll get an instant the following turn. So these Tarmogoyce are going to become problematic. I'm going to take one of them. So I'm mostly just hoping that the opponent does not spike like a daze or a force naturally. That would probably be the scariest scenario for me. Uh, this is quite good. So this is 9 coming in, and I don't think my opponent will block. I'm just going to keep the Endless one alive. Like, they they probably need to wait a turn on this Tarmogoyf until they can play the Brainstorm, turn it into a 4-5, or five, and then try to trade with my Thought Knots here. By not attacking with the Endless One, we potentially get in two points of damage this turn. My opponent might just be playing a Delver, and the Delver might just be thrown in front of the bus. We'll see. Tarmogoyf historically is one of the more annoying cards for Eldrazi to play against. Cards like... Uh, Tarmogoyf and Knight of the Reliquary, they get bigger than like a 5-5. Five, five. 
become problematic. <coughs> It seems to be in a top position. This is a slow-ish brainstorm. Although this game is moving very quickly, so no actual complaints about my opponent's pace of play, uh, to clarify. The interesting thing about the brainstorm here is that every fetch land my opponent plays uh, just puts them closer and closer to something like a walking ballista potentially just killing them. And that was a shuffle with that ponder. And now I kind of just expect a Delver to be played out. Yeah. Alright, so if I attack with everything... Is there any way that this is bad for me? So my opponent can block. The Reality Smasher has to get blocked when my opponent dies. Full stop. My opponent cannot double block the Reality Smasher or they die. My, my opponent can block... Yeah, uh, so this, this attack is going to be fine for me. Yeah, okay. That's that's about what I thought. Okay, so now we're going to adjust our sideboarding now that we know that we're playing against Delver. <coughs> we're going to want removal spells. And against a Delver deck, Chalice is good, but against Bug Delver specifically, this isn't going to be the best. Tumble Magnet is going to be good against Tarmogoyf. Jitte is going to be good against Delver's. Ballista is good against Delver, but not great against Tarmogoy since it puts an artifact into the yard. Still think my Ratchet Bombs are fine. The Sorcerer Spyglass is really good against Oko. I do wonder how many of those they actually have. So these are cards that I'm going to consider removing. So Endless One, Reality Smasher, and Endbringer are going to be the things that I'm going to be most relying on to actually win the game. Well, I'll put this in here to try it, so let's put this in. Giving, giving my stuff lifelink and making my elks bigger is cool. Let's bring the dismembers back in for Tarmogoyf. So these are my things that are going to answer creatures. As far as Oko specifically, I have just Ratchet Bomb for it as of right now. But this is 56. <coughs> so I could play Spatial Contortion for creatures and Sorcerer Spyglass for Okos. Or I can play Thorns, but Thorns on the draw are kind of eh. Also kind of eh are the matter reshapers. Probably have to keep this. I'm gonna be really hoping to draw a land though. This is a classic example of a hand that you keep and you just get delvered by keeping. But I have turn one mimic into turn two uncounterable thought knots here. That's a pretty strong start.
Yep. I knew that going in. I don't think I want to play a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two this turn. I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn. <clears throat> Brutal. Again, I'm not just going to play a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two endless one. I don't think that's a path that leads me towards victory. I'm going to be playing towards like an Eye of Ugin off the top of my deck to play multiple endless ones and matter reshaper in the same turn. Third wasteland, come at me. That seems like an incorrect brainstorm to me. <coughs> I don't understand what they're fishing for. It's like he drew it up this way. So awkwardly, I can't make Thought Knots here uncounterable. How much do I care? I can make two 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 endless ones and a matter reshaper, all of which could be countered, and then play Thought Nuts here next turn if I don't get wastelanded. <clears throat> I think that's fine. Draw one. Storm is two. So we expose this card to a counter spell. And my opponent may bite. If my opponent dazes, I will pay. Because seven power when my opponent has two lands in play is pretty strong. Ooh. Uh, I will not pay for that. So all of a sudden, I'm feeling okay, especially if I just spike a land, or even better, a soul land off the top of my deck. I did not do that, but I get to crash in for four. Yeah, that's fine. Land? Um, that'll do the trick. My opponent has used two dazes already. So 100% willing to try to kill that. Of course. I was expecting to get a force of will out of that. <coughs> oh geez, just more Tarmogoyfs? Ice Fang Coatl over there? Or is my opponent just seeing that I have no ability to cast my card and they're just going for it? Are you gonna like decay one of these? No? Okay.
So this is not the worst position. <coughs> but the spatial contortion kills an elk. Or trades with a Tarmogoyf after an endless one. And this is now uncounterable. All right, so my opponent has two lands remaining. What is this? That costs this much mana. Gurmag Angler? Gurmag Angler, okay. Um. I think that is just occurring. It's just a touch awkward. So I can spatial cont contortion, whack my opponent for four. Lose thought nuts here, they draw a card. And then be one mana short of just thought not searing again and taking said card. So my line to victory probably involves playing another Thought Not Seer, chump blocking exactly enough to stay alive, and then trying to swing in for eight with two Thought Not Seers on my turn. Is it going to be polluted delta? I think it's going to be polluted delta. The food that my opponent is going to make is actually the most problematic thing of all here. Because I can deal 8. 11 is harder. Possible still with spatial contortion. But life's bad. All right, now we can dismiss that. Oh, opponent has found something they want to play. That they need that mana for. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Uh, note, I have set a stop on my draw step so that I can potentially just wasteland my opponent off of the force of will that they're representing in the draw step. Um, I'm just going to block the absolute minimum number of things here since my opponent did not attack with the food. Um, so I will just block the Gurmag Angler and go to four. Berserk, get me. Awkwardly playing around the force of will that my opponent is representing plays into days. Uh, but you can't have it all. There's three dazes in the graveyard. Alright, um, that's an annoyance. That's why they fetched. It wasn't force of will. Life's looking grim. I need another removal spell, I guess. Uh, what does that do? One, two, three, four, five. Reality Smasher. My opponent blocks Thought Knots here with Delver. Food with Endless One takes five. I die on the swing back. <coughs> Otherwise, I spatial contortion the food, swing in, don't have lethal, or I play Reality Smasher, hold back, Reality Smasher gets turned into a food, I have two lethal threats. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I win if I pass the turn, so I'm just going to play the Reality Smasher. Oh, I'm in my draw step. So I'm just going to play the Reality Smasher and just confirm that my opponent knows how combat math works. Opponent confirmed knowing how combat math works, so I will concede there. Uh, so we lost that one essentially to just getting stuck. Uh, we kept a very... We kept a hand that was a little bit soft to an opening wasteland, which my opponent did have. My opponent had no pressure, but I just missed land drops. Um, and, you know, that, that is what it is. You know, I had very good cards in my hand that I could not cast for a long time. The dazes were a little rough. Like, the initial ones weren't bad for me, but that third one that I didn't play around. Uh, not point no. Fifteen stepper, most recently seen on DNT. Although they played elves, in fact, Blue Delver, lots of things in the past. <coughs> um, I 
This can be turn 2 Eldrazi Mimic into turn 3 attack for 10, assuming my mana does not get disrupted. That's probably fine. This is not a hand that I'm in love with when I'm not like very confident about what my opponent is playing. Remove that stop. I get wastelanded this turn. When I just play out this Caracas, my life's in really bad shape. <coughs> but I still think it is correct to just play towards my quickest goldfish, which involves. Mimic and Smasher working together. Ooh. Alright, they've gotten Jitte, assuming that I'm playing DNT. I'm very much not playing DNT. There's an argument to just like playing out the matter reshaper here instead, so that if things go wrong, I have something that's a little bit better and can put a land into play. Like the matter reshaper is better against the Jisse that's going to be coming down. But it doesn't pressure my opponent nearly as hard. I'm going to go ahead and play out the Mimic, because there's some worlds where I do just press my advantage as hard as possible. And just play, and just like ignore the Jitte that I've drawn, and just go Smasher into Smasher. We'll see though. Whether, how my opponent uses their Wasteland is kind of a big deal this turn. Like whether they use it on my Caracas or City of Traders. Or maybe they don't use it at all. Going all in on the Jitte here means that a Revoker or a Thalia beats me pretty savagely. I don't know why this is up. Like that, that just does not make sense to me. It has to be like Swords to Plowshares plus Stormforge Mystic activation, I guess. In which case everything is awful. That's why we didn't go all in on the Jitte. So my Eldrazi Mimic, unfortunately, is not the best now. And my opponent can wasteland me off of future cool things. <coughs> There's an argument for just putting the Jitte on Mom instead. 
um, but I don't know if that's 100% necessary. Thalia bounce thing is going to be pretty annoying, but I'm at least thankful that my opponent didn't put it back in immediately, because that means that I can resolve my Jote. Ape. Or it's an ape spirit, right? So I guess spirit is more ambiguous. still have to continue to send this in here. Sending in the Mimic doesn't really do much. Um, but I need to keep attacking with this Reality Smasher before Thalia's first strike plus Jitte invalidates a lot of my lines. <coughs> This is interesting. Did not expect this from my opponent. So they're willing to trade both of their creatures and both of their Jitte counters for this Reality Smasher. But then they're going to trade their Stoneforge Mystic for my Mimic, leaving themselves with two Jitte counters. Um, I don't know what's left in their hand. Ah, oh, okay. That, that makes it make more sense. What? 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 So opponent has Batter Skull in hand, I guess. And that's why they didn't attack. They get Batter Skull and put Jitte on it. I'm not dead. Well, I guess this can still name Spirit. I'm not dead, but I'm in bad shape. So I don't. I don't think I can just go for this here. In the face of what I suspect that my opponent has, so I'm gonna play out the Matter Reshaper. Because this thing dying at some point may ramp me towards the things that will beat what my opponent has. Alright, so we more or less had the read there on what was going on. The second port is rough. I block. <coughs> I can block and kill both the Stoneforge, leave my opponent with some Jitte counters. Try to spike a land off of Matter Reshaper so I can play Reality Smasher. Or 
or I can... These double ports on the other side of the field are brutal. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take this block. Taking that block also kind of makes me have to take this one. Because otherwise my opponent just gets to use one Jitte counter to kill this, one to kill this, clear my board. Alright. I'm not in love. My opponent's very, very favored here. And they may not even kill this matter reshaper. They do. Um, Alright. <coughs> this member would be so hot. No. So I can play a Reality Smasher, hold it back. My opponent can use 5 Jitte counters to kill it. Otherwise they can attack me for 10. I think I just need to use the maximum amount of mana possible. Hope they don't have anything they can put in off the ether vial. And figure out what I'm doing with my life from there. Seven for potential all is dust, seven for potential all is dust. And then I lose access to the Eldrazi Temple and one other land chosen at random that doesn't really matter. I guess the Caracas since it's different. And I am effectively dead at this point. I guess I'm not literally dead. <coughs> My opponent can use five Jitte counters, kill Reality Smasher, attack with Batter Skull, and Prelate. I mean, I I can keep casting spells. Hope my opponent makes an egregious error that allows me to slip back into this game. Um, but I don't think that's happening. So my opponent is representing lethal, I have to jump block that. Uh, this is this is the point where we will just throw in the towel. Um, so spatial contortions seem good, tumble magnet seems fine, spyglass, ratchet bomb seem fine, shadow spear is something that we can consider. 
the lifelink is kind of cool. The trample is also relevant in this matchup. So I definitely, well, not definitely. Um, Chalice of the Voids are good against Source of Plowshares, Vile, and the Path to Exiles that are in the sideboard. My opponents will be boarding the Mom out. My Matter Reshapers aren't great against White Removal. They're just essentially speed bumps. On the play, I will still probably play the Chalices. Because Ancient Tomb Chalice is a strong opener. But like all this stuff is better than the chalices. So that may or may not actually be true. When we get down to the nitty-gritty. So like this stops vile, this stops vile, this stops creatures, this stops creatures, this stops the removal spells on my big creatures. I think I have enough cards in the sideboard where I can actually junk most of these. Um so then the last question is, what do I think about this Shadow Spear versus the final Chalice? <coughs> I mean, the Trample's really good with the Thought Knot Seers and large Endless Ones. The Endless Ones are awkward against Flicker Wisp, though. Uh, that's something else I should keep in mind. Also awkward against Jailer. The endless ones are better with this in the deck. Let's see if we can Shadow Spear someone in this league. That'd be cool. Man. Four power, turn one, with no ability to cast spells. However, if I were to spike a soul land, I have everything that I could possibly want. I think I have to mulligan it still. Um, that one stings. This hand's great. Keep. I will get rid of the Caracas. So we have a very fast, aggressive start. Just mimic into thought not into thought not. Uh, multiple swords of plowshares from my opponent. Um, Sanctum Prelate, I guess, is still in the deck in fear of. All is dust. So the question is, do I let my opponent source the plow shares twice, or do I let them stone forge mystic? <coughs> I think I let them stone forge mystic because I can take it with thought not. I think I will take a swords. There goes the other swords. Kind of as expected. There's Factory. There's Stoneforge for a piece of equipment. It would be a shame if something happened to that Batter Skull. Opponent drew another Flicker Wisp. Uh, okay. So we take a batter skull and we strand my opponent with a bunch of cards that 
they can't currently cast. Note they have a flex land that is not white producing. Uh, and that's costly. That's a great top deck. <coughs> my opponent takes out my Thought Knot, leaving me with a Mimic. This ballista is gonna be good. This ratchet bomb is much less good in the face of two flicker wisp. We're not gonna be able to actually tick this up. That's fine. Unless my opponent randomly has another batter skull. In which case, it is very much not fine. Are you going to port me? You are going to port me. That's unfortunate. I was really planning on ticking up this ballista again. Any turn where they don't port me, I get to smash her. <coughs> so I guess I attack for four, and then if my opponent goes for Jitte Equip on something, I have to use the Ballista. So if they go for Jitte Equip, I Ballista them. Um, actually, I guess if I attack in with the Ballista, my opponent can double block with Stone Forges, and I just kill one Stone Forge and then lose the game immediately. So I can't actually attack with the Ballista, I have to just attack with the Mimic. <coughs> Unfortunate. because I really want to pressure my opponent so this Reality Smasher can be lethal. I really want my opponent to be missing land drops here. You're gonna wisp, you're probably gonna target my ballista. So I will go ahead and take out the flicker wisp. And deal some damage to you. Hope they don't port me. I think it should be their plan to port me though. Yeah. Just so I can get the F6 value, I'm uh, I'm just gonna do it that way. That's suboptimal, but I think it's fine. Kona has everything they need to beat me here. All they need to do 
is not let me get to a bunch of mana. I think you, well, there's an argument for tapping either land. So now my Ratchet Bomb is going to get Flicker Wisp this turn. My opponent is just going to like refuse to put in this Jitte all game. I don't particularly get that. That's rough after all that. I'm not gonna lie to you. <coughs> no factory. Also. I, so you just want to force me to blow the ratchet bomb on two so you can keep that stuff? That's fine. But you probably could have just flickered out the ratchet bomb, gotten in another attack with that stone forge, and maybe been just as happy. The other thing I can do is just let them have the Sword of Fire and Ice and blow up both Sanctum Prelate and Flicker Wisp. which I think I'm actually going to do. Because there's also a chance that they have just boarded out a piece of equipment. All right, they did have the Sword of Iron Ice. That's okay, they can't put it into play as long as they have this Ratchet Bomb on three. So the next thing will be, how long am I willing to hold the Ratchet Bomb on three? Like, can I afford five damage here? Don't know that I can, given that my opponent also has this factory.
And my opponent just like doesn't put the Sword of Fire and Ice into play if I don't crack this. So I don't really gain much. So if my opponent wants to play around Sorcerer's Spyglass, they should just equip now. I would also play around the Revokers. Oh, good god. Alright. That just gets a Flicker Wisp, which Flicker's Recruiter, which gets Palace Jailer. And the game is over. That's, uh, that's pretty savage. Oh, no Palace Jailer, just another Flicker Wisp. Uh, still very bad for me. But I have, like, another Ballista that I can get that would be very good. <coughs> uh, Spatial Contortion, you're a touch late. But I've waited this long, so... We play on. Yep. That's fine. That goes up to three toughness. We beat three toughness. I don't know that I actually like equipping there instead of on the Flicker Wisp. Because you want to keep the recruiter around as something that can let you bounce. All right. This factory is there to attack. Uh, playing the mimic does nothing. I can take nine, then try to string something together next turn. Uh, but I'm pretty dead. But my opponent has not been attacking with the factory. So, yeah. Um, which I don't really understand, given their resources. <coughs> <coughs> Yep. So now my opponent has taken me off of colorless. Alright, uh, my opponent navigated that one in a way very different than how I would have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and break the stream off here, and I'll upload the other two matches as a separate video when this goes live.